Alrighty, we should be rolling. Let me just check on YouTube, make sure everything's uh, as it should be. Had some problems streaming recently. That's That seems alright. Okay, here we go, here we go. Hit the link. Plop it in Discord. Hang on a moment. Do that. Plop it in Discord. Um... Here we go, hopefully the thumbnail updated. It did, awesome, I love it when that happens. All right. <laughs> oh, hey everyone, holy shit, there's a lot of people here already. Oh my god. What are you people, get, what are you people doing? <laughs> okay. So, uh, g good question, Blue Mustard. Um, we will be doing this for about three hours. I've got to go in three hours time so we'll just be going through as many theories as we can in that amount of time and then um we'll, we'll pick it up some other time all right um new newish setup here so y'all let me know if uh if it sounds like shit please um where's the chat i want my i want to be able to see the chat Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Hi, everyone. Oh, how nice of you to uh, all show up here. Great. That's lovely. Um, so, today we're just talking about Game of Thrones theories. We'll be back for a Song of Ice and Fire theories later on. Um, you can still submit theories uh, to this discussion in the description below. And uh, I've put I've plastered the link fucking everywhere, man. So just just hang tight. I'll get to it. Um, if I don't talk about the theory you you've submitted, it's because someone else submitted it, or I think it's too stupid. So, <laughs> um, I did say in the form I'm not doing joke theories. Oh, is there an EFAP on or something? Alrighty. If if you submitted it, I'll talk about it probably, unless it's unless it's really stupid. Yes, this is all because I um fifty thousand of you idiots subscribed to my channel, and I'm still trying to figure out why. And while I, and 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 while I figure it out, I'm going to do a stupid stream to placate all of you while you wait. All right, I, I'll I'll yes, this will be uploaded as a huge video, a big old video. Um, uh, this will do. This will take a few streams. I'm gonna collate them, cut out the chaff, and upload one one big honky video. So so there you go. <clears throat> Your theory was a joke. Then why did you submit it? Thanks. Yeah, you're on TV. Um, hang on. I'm just gonna neck this iced coffee so that I just woke up. So, um, w we'll see how this goes. Okay, um, what else do I need to tell you? I hope you've all had a good day. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the most recent video. If you didn't catch it, uh, leave this place now and go watch it. I thought it was pretty good. Please do tell me if I'm too soft. That's basically what I was talking about earlier. New microphone, new setup. I don't know how this is all... Anyway, I'll start waffling soon, and we can get into it. Face reveal at 100k, oh, that's funny. I told you to stop submitting jokes. Alright, so um, I'm not going to be looking at chat the whole time. We'll never get anything done if I do, so. Am I going to watch the spin-offs? Hell yeah, I am. House of the Dragon actually doesn't look that bad. I, I'm actually kind of... I, I don't get hyped for things. I'm going to watch it. It seems like it won't be awful. And I'll, I'm excited to see uh, how wrong I am about that. Alright, I'm going to stop validating chat now and just move on to doing better things with my life. Okay, so I think that's a bit enough. So here's our setup for the day. I'm going to need to 
get chat out of the way. I'm sorry, chat. You'll have to disappear. Um, what we've got here is a Photoshop file where I, I, I'm going to place every theory I discuss on these two axes. Uh, so for, on your y-axis you can see we've got how much I personally harbor affection for it. If I love a theory, it'll go up the top. If I go down, if I hate it, it's going down the bottom. That's pretty obvious. And on the x-axis is um, my confidence in the theory. So to the right is um. Oh, thank you very much for the super chat. What's that say? Yeah, you... oh, it's just you telling me you love me. Oh, that's so nice. Uh oh, um, I'm going to have to hide super chats for the purpose of this. I'll play them all after the stream is done. Uh, I'll, I'll do like a reading of them like they do on that one podcast. Yes, I am going to have to talk about um, Tywin is the Dusky Woman, uh, but not today. That'll be that'll be in a different stream. Okay. <laughs> so, y yes, the x-axis is um, my confidence. If it's all the way on the left, I, I don't think it'll... I don't think there's any way it'll happen. If it ha if it's on the right, I'm co I'm basically saying yes, this will happen. This is true. If it's in the middle, I eh, either way, you know, I'm not really sold on it one way or the other. I feel like that's a pretty understandable system. And if if you don't think that, ah, make your own. All right, so. The way this works is I've got a huge list of theories. You want to check out this huge list of theories? <laughs> I'll briefly show it to you. Um, hang on, how do I how do I briefly show it to you? Uh, I'll just drag the tab over. You won't be able to see the whole thing, but there's just so many fucking theories. You people went nuts. I was not expecting this many. So this is all from the Google form. And then, um, then I've put more stuff in from, um, a document I had with patrons and then some Reddit threads I browsed just to get some more theories going. All right. I believe that's enough waffling for time. Let's get into it. Let's crack on as they say in, 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 in places where people say that. Okay. Uh, there's about 400 theories that people submitted there, plus maybe an extra hundred that I added on. Okay. Just getting all of my ducks in a row. Ah, that is something I had not done yet. So I have to somehow go through this list just sorting out <laughs> the Game of Thrones theories. Um, that's the Song of Ice and Fire theory. Someone submitted it as a Game of Thrones theory. Um, the first one is... I, I don't want to talk about that right away. <laughs> Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to duplicate. Am I going to do that? Yes, I am. Let's do this. Sorry, I'm doing a thing I should have done first. <laughs> There we go. I just want to see Game of Thrones theories. There we go. Ah, uh, that's nice. Let's work from the from the. There's really not that many of them. All right, maybe we'll be able to get through this pretty quickly. Okay. Well, great. The first one I'm going to talk about is a me theory. This is one that I came up with that someone submitted, um, and it's of course. Uh, one of my most famous theories, and it's Rhaegar is the Night King. So, you know, the blue dude who torments the protagonists throughout the show? Yeah, that's actually Rhaegar. And the thinking goes that he rides dragons, he's fireproof, and these are both Valyrian traits. And, you know, it also works out um, in this, you know... Um... Star Wars, I am your father type way that he is John's father, and and you know it's 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 cool that 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 um, Rhaegar is brought into the into the story as this. Guy. It's it's really fucking stupid, and 
I, I kept saying it in videos as a joke, and people kept believing me that, that, I, that I wasn't saying a joke. And then I made a whole video about it for April Fool's, and everyone loved it, of course, it's a great video. And then some people still thought I was being serious about it. So th this theory holds a, per a, a special place in my heart. It, 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 there's no way it's true. It's really goddamn stupid, but I love it. it it's going all the way at the top of the y-axis. Um, I'm going to have to shrink stuff down all the way because we have a lot of stuff to fit on here. So just bear with us there. Okay. Yeah, th the biggest hurdle the theory has to cross is that... um. Rhaegar's dead, like mega dead. Uh, his 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 chest was caved in by a big hammer, and there are lots of witnesses. <laughs> and we also know that the Night King was made by the children of the forest many thousands of years ago. So you can see how. It, I had to do some work to put a case forward for the theory. <laughs> hey, that's not a joke theory. It's 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 real. <laughs> I'm a real boy. Alright. Okay, what next do we have? Here's a more legitimate theory that I also hate. We've got Bran is the Night King. Okay. This is one that people actually take seriously for some reason. Um, no, I shouldn't dismiss it like that. It actually holds some water. So, th the idea is... I'm actually going to put it over here. It, it's, it has a lot of a lot of backing to it. it. It made a lot of sense before the end of the show happened. But I hate it. Uh, so, so, the idea is that... Um, there's actually a lot of different ideas that get this idea... That gets this theory across. And that's that... <laughs> Gods, I was wrong then. Um, that's that Bran is a lot of people. that, it, Like, through time travel and mind control and, and, you know, walking into people's bodies and living out their lives, he is actually a lot of people throughout history. So some theories have him as Bran the Builder, Bran the Broken, Bran the Break... You know, all of these different brands throughout history are actually the brand that we know. And I hate that theory as well. Well, we I, that might come up later. Um, but this one is just that Bran is the Night King, and I think it, it developed as kind of a cope, to be honest, during season eight. Um, yeah, you've been Mandela effect. I, I I'm just gonna leave it here. I don't know if it requires much more elaboration. I think it's an idea that occurred to a lot of people. Um. I just really dislike... Um, why do I hate it so much? That's what this stream is all about. Me figuring out why I have the prejudices I have. Bran the Brandon. I think... Hmm. I was gonna say, I'll come back to that, but if I say that for every theory, the stream will never end. <laughs> I'm really gonna have to hide chat. You guys are super distracting. And everything you say is just nonsense. <laughs> okay. Um Why don't why do I think Bran can't be the Night King? Am, am I am I just racist against against um White Walkers? Maybe it's just a gut level response. Okay. We have um, an, another another shit one. I, I need to stop saying this before I put them on. People legitimately believe them. I can't just like, can't just say now. Here's another one that only stupid people think. No, if you, if you think this, you, you you're not necessarily stupid. You could be. A lot of people are stupid, but you might be smart. And this is Serio equals Jacken. And this one also like it isn't instantly dismissible. I just hate it. So. Oh, there's no stroke on this. You can't be. You won't be able to see it through. I'll have to fix that later, or right now. Hang on. Uh, don't worry. You're just seeing behind the um, what you call it, the curtain a little bit. Ah, uh, that stroke's too big. 
This is just this is just one big debacle. I hate it. Oh well. Um you'll deal with it. Okay. So we have Serio equals Jacken. The idea that Serio escaped from the battle with Marin Trant, um and snuck away to become Jacken Hagar in the cage that Arya walks past when she escapes King's Landing. Well, well when Yorin is, you, you know, that he, he becomes, you know who Jacken Hagar is. That You know this theory, Serio equals Jacken. And people think this in the books as well, and I'll, I'll let you know my thoughts on that some other time. But in Game of Thrones, I think it holds more water because of the whole God of Death thing. But there's also no evidence to indicate it. So, and also, Meryn Trant is fine. Like, he shows up, or he shows up later looking fine. I mean... He, he, looking the same as he used to. So, it, it also kind of diminishes uh, the association between martial prowess and loneliness that the show had begun, had started building up for Arya. Because, you know, Arya is interested in fighting but then every single time she does it it all it leads to uh, people she likes meeting incredible difficulties let's say so she she's i mean not that she extremely likes sansa but you know she's her sister and and deep down as we find out they do love each other and so when she trains with micah um Lady gets killed and Sansa hates her, Arya becomes more alienated from her family and more alone. And later on when she trains with Sirio, who she really comes to like, uh, and then... Uh, th then Meryn shows up and kills him. I think that if he slinks away to become Jack and Hagar, it, it's kind of like, well, that that's not really what you were doing there, was it? I think that it's kind of like... Just a way of giving some meaning to the faceless men, because as it is, there's not much going on in that department in the show that we watched, unfortunately. So there's there's a serial equals Jacken. Uh, oh, here here's one of my favorites, and and we'll we'll get into why I say that. We've got Gendry, is Cersei's son. Now, you, some of you may not have heard this idea. I'm not going to put this anywhere particular for now. We're going to talk about it, then I'll place it. Some of you may have may just be hearing this for the first time. And yes, this is a real theory. Some people do think this. Um, it, it's to do with the baby that the show invented for Cersei in Season 1, the black-haired beauty that she tells Catelyn about. Um, some people are like, Ah, Gendry, Gendry's got black hair. Gendry is Robert's son. So maybe Cersei... Uh, gave birth to Gendry, and there are a few different form factors to this. Some people say, ah, she forgot. And other people say she gave the baby up because she couldn't bear to see it die, something like that. And I think that none of those things, because Gendry is too old. <laughs> um, actually, uh, mm, they say in The Wolf and the Lion that this is Cersei and Robert because they have a discussion about the baby as well, which I think is a point against the theory because um, Cersei says to Robert that uh, she still... I think that the context is she kind of loved him uh, even when they lost this baby. So I don't see... P people think, ah, she was lying to Catelyn to make her... Um, to endear herself to her. But that doesn't really go anywhere, because they never really interact again. Um, <clears throat> but then she goes ahead and says the same thing to Robert. So why why would she lie to Robert about a pretend baby that she made up for, for them to have had? No, 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 no. Um, so, I, don't know, I, I think it's pretty stupid. I'm sorry to say. And I, I think that 
The other thing is that Gendry is supposed to represent, like, peak per peak Baratheon performance. Y you know, just look at him, look at his hammer, he he's he's jacked, um, and he he's the uniting of the houses of Baratheon and Stark that Ned and Robert wanted. You know, that that's, that's the idea there, and I think that giving him Lannister parentage is... is Ugh. It doesn't do much. <laughs> and the other, th like, people are like, ah, but it makes him the legitimate heir to the throne. All that does is make the uh, meeting in the Iron Throne s even more frustrating. So I, I think that there's no way this is true. And, like, I don't, I don't hate it all too much, but it's definitely in this lower quadrant. So let's put that down there. All right, trucking along. Now here's one that we can actually that, that that might actually end up here. We have Drogon flew to Volantis after the end of the show with Daenerys's corpse. Right, that's the idea there. Um, and I think this could very well be true because there's um no evidence to indicate he went anywhere else. I'm pretty sure we see him flying to the east, but that could really that doesn't really mean much. He's just leaving the throne room. Um, Bran can't instantly find him, which in, which like might indicate that he's just like pretty far away. Philantus is pretty far away, and the idea there is that Daenerys was worshipped as Azora High in Volantis, and there are people there who may have the power to and the will to. Uh, resurrect Daenerys. So the idea there is that Drogon picked up Daenerys' corpse. Drogon smart is the idea a and he's gonna go to the east to find someone who can revive her. That That's that's the theory there. I don't love it, but I, I, I let's just put it maybe somewhere around here. I like it and it seems kind of likely. There's nothing to like debunk it, but there's also like, it's just kind of headcanon, it's just speculation, just an interpretation. So, yeah, that looks like a decent spot for that. Um, oh, then we have, now, oh, here we go, we have Brothel Bard, which is the name I keep trying to give this theory that has never caught on. Brothel Bard. This is an explanation for what the fuck Bro uh, Podrick did in that brothel. And I think it's a really good explanation. And I think it's probably um, the best part of Season 8, actually. That they introduce this idea that Podrick is a really good singer. Go back and listen to um, Dan D Daniel Portman singing Jenny's song in um, A Night of the Seven Kingdoms. He's so good. And then in The Last of the Starks, he drinks when they're playing the drinking game. And Tyrion says, you're a virgin. So... Those two facts combined lead me to think that Podrick did not have sex with those ladies, and instead he sang for them so well that they, like, kind of um, simped for him and gave him his money back. So I think that, I, I like, I, th completely biased here, I think that this is true and I love it. Mainly because I've got those two pieces of supporting evidence, no pieces of evidence against it, and it just re I just really like it, um, uh, <laughs> in, in, in my brain. So there you go. Alright, let me tick that one off the list. We've got, um, <laughs> uh, who should we go with here? 99 walkers. Alright, this one's more of a question than a theory, to be honest. Uh, and this is some... I think one person has been, like, trying to contact me on every single different social media platform talking to me about this. So, in my Long Night video, I added up the number of walkers that had been killed and that were present at Winterfell. And I was like, why are there only... I think it was 16. Why are there only 16 white walkers? And... There's no answer for that, of course, because there's no explora exploration for the White Walkers at all throughout the show. Um, and this person's like, hey, 
Crasta gave his sons to the others, to the White Walkers. And Crasta says he had 99 sons, or other people say he had 99 sons. So that means that there should be um, 99 Walkers around, right? And my answer to that is no. I don't think there should be because A... We don't know if Crast is full of shit when he says that number, or if whoever says it is inflating it for some reason, or just there's this rumor mill about it. Um, so that number could be completely fabricated. Then we have, um, we we don't know when Crast made his deal with the White Walkers, and we don't know who else could have killed any Walkers in between that deal beginning. And the first White Walker we see killed by Sam in season three. So, it's a it's a decent question that I really wish that they had explained. Um, you know, I, mainly because I wish we got any, as I say, exploration into the White Walkers. But I, I, it it just doesn't really do anything for me. Like I don't hate it. I think it would be cool if they discussed it. So I'm not going to put it all the way down there. But I I just don't think there's much to it. So let's put it over there. Okay. Um, in a similar vein, we have... Oh, whoops. We have... White Hodor. And that's this idea that the, that the White Walkers, or at least the Night King, uh, could have turned Hodor into a white, and they just didn't. So, it's not really a theory, it's more of a suggestion. And, um, yeah, I don't know why they didn't do it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I... Oh, what's the guy's name? I can't remember. I'm... Oh, is it Christian Unknown? Or is, it, is that another guy? Um, I, I'm pretty sure he, he was available to, to, to fill the role. But there you go, um... They didn't do it, and it would have been cool if they did, but they didn't, because... Oh, I don't fucking know. So, um, it didn't happen, but I would have liked it. I, I guess is what I'm gonna do with, with that, you know? Because uh, it, it's not a theory, it's it's just an idea. Um, where, do I, where did I put that? There it is. Okay. <clears throat> I've got another of, um... Another theory that I suggested originally. Don't worry, we'll get to other shit later on. Tyrion is Oppo, the whimsical moron dwarf, who is a character in the books, but he's never introduced in the show. I mean, he's not really a character in the books. He's kind of mentioned after he's dead by his sister, who shows up um, in Essos when Tyrion's doing shit over there. Um, so this this is my explanation for why Tyrion becomes a gaping moron in the latter half of the show. So the uh, so when Varys takes Tyrion to Illyrio's palace in season 5, it's not actually Tyrion. It's an idiot dwarf and Tyrion is actually dead. Cersei got her. Cersei got him. So th that's that's what I've got there. Um uh it's not true, but I kind of like it. <laughs> it it's pretty fucking stupid. Whoa, I just moved the whole world. Okay, we're gonna put that right there. It's, I, I think it's a funny one. Uh, actually, I like it a bit more than that, actually. Let's put it up there. Okay. Oh, now here's, here's a favorite of mine. In that Peter didn't die. Okay, so this one's a cope. I'm sorry to tell you, but you are coping, if you believe this. Peter Baelish was unjustly murdered at Winterfell in a really dumb trial by two, three children who had not earned victory over him. And that's what happened in the story, and we all have to deal with that. Peter Baelish is dead. Um, but this theory goes that he faked his death in Season 7, and there's these YouTube videos that have millions of views explaining how this is cool and how it's actually true and that Peter's like a faceless man or something like that. Th no. No, no, it's just not. Yeah, I, I can lock the layer. I thought I had already done that, actually. Um, yeah, so th this is this is no. Um, not only did it not happen, 
but if it did happen, I don't think it would have been good because <laughs> prior to his death, there's no indication that Peter's into magical shit like that. There's no indication that he's into faceless men, wo- wooby dooby, that kind of voodoo magic. Uh, so so I hate this, and it didn't happen. <laughs> Uh, this is a fun stream. I'm having fun. Okay. Oh, we've already done that one. So because a lot of people submitted the same theory, I have to go through and uh, you know deal with that. We've got. Um. Oh wow! Someone had the same one just there. Okay. Oh, now here's one. Here, here, here's one. I mean, they're all one, but um, Peter recognized Arya. This is, um, in season two, when Arya's serving Tywin at Harren Hall, and Peter shows up for a meeting, um, and Arya's like, oh, he might recognize me. Um, Aiden Gillen, the actor who played Littlefinger, um, I think in an interview he said that he played it as though he did recognize her, but there was no indication in the script one way or the other. So, this is basically open to interpretation, but, yeah... Because, you know, the actor figured that it did, but the script didn't say anything. So th- there's only one point in the favour, but there's no point against. However, throughout the rest of the show, it's never brought up again. Ari is not like, I saw you working with Tywin at Harrenhal in the trial. And, and, and Peter's not like, I saw you working with Tywin at Harrenhal to legitimise Arya against Sansa. So, sorry, delegitimise. Um, so, it would be cool, and Aiden Gillen, he's a brilliant performer, he, he, um, he, he played it in such a way that it could be interpreted like this, but given how the rest of the show played out, I don't think it happened. So, I like it, but it didn't happen. Oh, it, 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 like, it may have happened, but there's not very much in support of it. Uh, where is that? I should highlight theories before writing them on so I don't have to find them again. <sighs> okay. Um, the real Gendry is still rowing. Um, I'm just going to delete that one. We don't <laughs> we don't really need to talk about that. Um, okay, so he, now we get to talk about Dario's Marine. Of course, when Daenerys leaves Slaver's Bay, sorry, the Bay of Dragons, it, at the end of Season 6, she puts Dario Naharis in charge, a foreign sellsword company leader, because, you know, they're so renowned for their political prowess. Um, so, there's no theory given here. Someone just submits, well, someone just submitted Dario as a Marine, and um, I guess this is just an opportunity to discuss it. So... Every inclination we could have about how this goes indicates that Dario's Marine instantly crumbles. Unless he, like, immediately uh, exerts absolute military power. Those are the only two ways this could go. So, (laughs) I I think it would have been really cool... For them to... I, I think it's actually a, a decent opportunity for a spin-off, to be honest. Because I think that Mitchell Huisman um, d- d- is a really good actor. And I love his Dario. And they just dumped him. It, it really sucks. And it would have been cool to explore him a bit more. Or at least hear about him once in the two seasons following his departure. So what I'm going to do is... Just put this um, Dario's Marine crumbled let's say and let's put a space there and uh shrink it down and say that yeah this is likely and and i like it so but but i don't think it'll i don't think it'll ever be explored which is unfortunate um i did the thing again where i selected where i chose a theory and didn't highlight it there it is um oh yeah and the same thing goes for the bay of dragons idea like there's this whole you know daenerys renames the whole region but then it's never mentioned again. In fact, I think someone calls it Slaver's Bay later on in the show. 
so it, it's mentioned once and then completely forgotten about. So I'm just going to just throw that out there. Yeah, Amnesia Water Time. So we've got... What happened to Howland Reed? So Howland Reed is a character in the show. He He's in that flashback in Home. No, no, no. It's in Oathbreaker, season six, episode three. Um, Bran sees him uh, kill Arthur Dane. He saves him from Ned. He saves Ned from him. And and then he never shows up. Even though Mira Reed is a character in the show, and he's mentioned before that, I think when Jojen and Mira are telling Bran about the past. So, what happened here? Howland Reed is an alive character who n- was at the Tower of Joy. How is this person not mentioned more? He's extremely relevant, and yet he's he, he's just he's just never. He's, I made a joke about it in my season. Uh, when was it? No, it was the season eight leaks video, forever ago. Don't watch it. Um, that he slept through his alarm. Because the show never addresses, and I was completely right about that. That the show would never address what happened to him so this isn't really a theory it's just like a hey what the fuck happened here um there's no explanation for it he's just not around maybe he figured ah they've got it they'll be fine (laughs) so i can't really do anything with this it's just a discussion about a character that could have been cool but wasn't and then we've got so someone wanted me to talk about the new Prince of Dawn. Which, again, there's not much to go on, really. Some people say, oh, he's um he's Quentin. He's Doran's other son. But uh, Doran only had one son in show canon. He only had one child. There's no Ariane. There's no Quentin. There's none of that. Some people say, ah, he's like some, some other brother of Doran and Oberyn's. And that's not a thing either. We're told that... I mean, we're told about that generation of the Martell family several times. It's just Elia, Doran, and Oberyn. That's all. And some be like, well, maybe he's Oberyn's son. Oberyn doesn't have any sons. So it's like, who the fuck is this guy? Where did he come from? He looks like a Martell, but there's no room in the immediate Martell family tree for for him. So, again, it's just the show conjuring a character to fill this, uh, you know... To fill this role they needed filled in because they hadn't established anything. Okay, a lot of these um, theory submissions are going to be things like that. So what I'm going to do is uh, go elsewhere in my list and find other theories that were submitted earlier on that I think will be less uh, copy like that. And now we have, this is a really interesting one. And this is, Tyrion is, hold on with me here. Tyrion is autistic. Now, (laughs) I'm pretty sure the guy who submitted this um, um, was joking, was making a joke. But, um, yeah, yeah, no, Tyrion is not autistic. It, it it does open up an interesting conversation about who in the show could be, you know, um, neurodivergent and, and in what ways they could be so. Um, a lot of people, especially in the books, think that Stannis is autistic, and that's, that's interesting, and uh, there's some likelihood to that. Hang on, no, don't talk about the books, talk about the show! Okay, so we've got... Um... Ah, yes. Puppet Master Bran. So this is the one that um, Bran is fucking with everyone throughout Season 8, maybe Season 7, maybe even through the whole show, to put himself on the throne. And I... You know what? I, I don't like it, but there's... See, it's a, th- it's a thing they could have gone with. They could have done this if they really wanted to, or even if they just kind of wanted to, but but they they didn't really go with anything. They just went with nothing. And um, 
people say, ah, but they left all of these breadcrumbs for us to pick up on. And, like, no, they didn't. Not really. They, they just... No. They just wrote a, a shit ending. <laughs> Um, so, th this idea is that, like, you know, uh, Bran was manipulating Daenerys, John, Tyrion, uh, uh, who else does he need to have manipulated to get to the, I, I, I guess those three basically do it, you know, mess with Danny so she blows up King's Landing, mess with John so he kills her, there's actually no real good reason, like, John goes into the meeting with Daenerys. I, I talked about it in my Iron Throne meeting that a, a video that his rationale for killing Daenerys kind of comes from nowhere. So Bran messing with his head actually would explain that, but it it's baseless. There, there's nothing to go on here. And then I'm uh, messing with Tyrion to get the meeting started, and Tyrion also suggests that we make Bran king. Um, who was it that suggested they vote? I think that was Tyrion too, wasn't it? So, so this like ha it it's not the least likely thing ever. I do hate it, but I think that it's it's not the least possible thing around. Um, I I just really dislike it. Oh, I poop it. Poop it! Thank God I saw that. Have, are there any other spelling mistakes in here? <laughs> okay. I don't see any. Um, so that one just says Game of Thrones is bad, which is true, but not a theory. No, Game of Thrones is actually really good. It's a really great show that just has really poor writing for the last half. Um, we are, we've already done Peter Didn't Die. Get more theories, guys. Um, this one's a question. Someone, I'm not going to write this on the screen. I'm just going to answer a question. Someone asked, how does the scythe work? Um, because the, um, it doesn't make sense to this person. Who is this? We've got Prince Bogo suggested, uh, we'll put this in. Uh, how does the big scythe make sense? Like, how do they reel it in? And they only used it once. It might be because I'm jaded, but that thing has to weigh like 5,000 pounds and it just sits on the wall and they drop it. But how does it get back up before this... Therefore, the scythe is magical and can't exist because the ice would make it slippery as fuck to pull it back up. Um, um, so, so the scythe's really cool, and I, I think we need to acknowledge that before we start questioning how it works. It's really cool. Okay, but... Oh, first of all, uh, here's another one. Uh, this is actually a theory, um, that the chains came from the scythe. <laughs> you know the chains they used to dig up um, Viserion from the frozen lake in Beyond the Wall? People are like, well, where the fuck did the, the, the White Walker army get the all of these chains? And the answer is, it's the chain from the scythe. Now you might be wondering, how did, the, how, how, how did they get the scythe from the wall, which they haven't been to yet? Shh. Don't worry about that. So... This is nonsense, but but, but but I don't hate it. it it's like, it, it bothers me, but... <laughs> so, so there's no way it happened. Um, so, but to answer that question, how does the big scythe work? Um, oh, look, you raised some legitimate points, but they have pulleys and levers to bring up. The, the lift on the wall is also super heavy, but they use it all the time. So I think that... The scythe is supposed to be a one-time usage. You see how much how much of the wall it cleaves off when they use it. So I don't think it's supposed to be instantly, you know, we pull it back up and then throw it again. I don't think that's the point. It's we drop it once for a big hit and then, you know, I guess we pull it up tomorrow by using 50 guys. You know, I think that's the idea. Uh, we've already done Bran is the Night King. Uh, oh, I just, uh, there's the chains came from the wall, from, from the wall, yes, cool, someone actually did submit that. Um, then we have, uh, Ned would have told John his parentage, so Ned would have, this one, is this really a theory? I suppose it is. Um, Ned would have told John, 
R plus L. I'll, I, I, I'll just say that. Uh, actually, how about Ned would have revealed, the, the, and then we write the equation. So, some good old p parentage algebra. So, Ned would have revealed R plus L equals J. So, the idea is that when Ned said when they depart in King's Road, he says to John, um, we'll talk about your mother the next time I see you. And the idea there is that he's telling the truth. He f had he was fully intending on doing that. Uh, because the next time Ned was going to see John, he was going to be a man of the Night's Watch already. Which would mean that, you know, any qualms about inheritance, uh, fighting for the throne, um, they, they'd be gone. There, there's nothing to worry about there. And we have a case study for that because Aemon Targaryen is at the wall and Robert's not concerned about that. So John being at the wall and if he's revealed to be a Targaryen, uh, um, that wouldn't be a problem because Robert is fine with Aemon. He's probably going to be fine with John if he's at the wall. He's probably going to hate Ned for harboring a Targaryen all those years. But maybe he'd understand, because, you know, it's Leander's, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> or maybe he just wouldn't tell Robert. you just tell John, say, hey, keep this on the down low. Um, because if if it leaks, uh, the king's going to be mad at me. So, yeah, there's that. I, I, think that this is, I think that this is true. I think that Ned uh, absolutely intended on telling John his, his parentage. I'm going to put this in, I'm going to make it, it definitely, yeah. I don't, you know, I'm not super invested in it, so let's put it around here, maybe. But, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's true. Okay, I can't say it's true, but I think it's very likely. Oh, aha, here we fucking go. We've got Pigeon Ned. Um, <laughs> so, for, for the uninitiated, this idea is that when Ned is executed... Uh, all the Starks are wargs, and as we know from uh, importing some book lore for no reason, when wargs die, their minds can wander into animals. Typically, and by typically I mean only, animals that they're already bonded with. Um, for example, people think that John's soul went into Ghost, uh, people think that Rob's soul went into Grey Wind, and Varamir six skins the war this warg in the book. He, he, his soul goes around, he has a little bit of a journey before settling inside of an animal. And that, that's also where we get the, um, oh boy, no, I can't go into a human, that'd be fucked up. Um, and, and so this idea exists that Ned was a warg, and when he died, his soul went into a pigeon. And that pigeon was none other than Albert Einstein. Um, uh, people think that it's one of the pigeons that Arya... Picks that I like picks up. We we see her catching pigeons before. Wait a minute, before Ned's execution. So that's stupid. Um, <laughs> uh, pigeon Ned is is great. I love it. It's 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 one of the stupid. It's even stupider than Rhaegar is the Night King. To be honest, I love it. And there's absolutely no way it happened. So let's just uh, put it up here with the things that actually I don't love White Hood all that much. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, oh, now we have a production theory. So this one uh, is um, season eight, episode seven. That there's a secret, um, um, hidden episode to Game of Thrones that secretly makes the ending not shit. And uh, no, come on, man. I I I get it. C um, copium is in short supply. We have to make up our own, but. But, dude, no way. No way, and I hate it. <laughs> because, because, no. And, and some people, some people actually submitted me their, like, summary of a season 8, episode 7 script. I read them. I don't remember them. Because, like, it, it's all just nothing, honestly. That, um, I, I'm sorry to tell you. Um, your headcanon isn't going to, isn't going to make me think that the show isn't awful. Um, 
Well, the, the ending isn't awful. The show's great. All right. So, uh, the, the next theory we have is, um, that's not me. Um, parentheses, that's, that's not you. Um, and, and the theory here goes that this isn't actually me, and it's also not you. And, um, I, I think that's true, and I love it. And, and then I'm going to delete it. Because th this is me, actually. So, um, th this one's great. I love what happened here. Um, someone submitted, uh, uh, a, a f this was a while back, like over a month ago. Someone submitted, Glidus will make videos. A and, and they put, they put it at five in confidence. Like, a, um, a on the form, there's a scale from one to five and how confident you are in the theory. And this person was, ex like, entirely confident that I will make videos and they were right so this is true and I love it I love making videos and I did it and, and you were right about that congratulations um, uh, subscribe just gonna delete those now <laughs> um, okay so this one uh, this is this is an actual one uh, house of the undying shows Danny's death. Okay, so th this one is that um, at the end of season two when Danny goes into the house of, of the Undying and has these wacky visions, uh, they are foretelling of her death. And this has been an idea for quite a while, a long time before season eight came out, um, that what Daenerys is seeing is not only just her end of the story, but also the end of her life. I don't think it was that popular at the time. I think it was mainly seen as um, j just an idea about how her story will go. But here's the thing. I it, It's an interpretation that kind of gives Season 8 some credit. But also it doesn't because the writing was already done for them. So... Hmm. Hang on, I've got to make this window bigger so I can read more. Yeah, so... It's a show-only theory because the visions at the House of the Undying in the book are really different uh, and a lot more complicated and uh, bleh, you know? Um, the biggest hurdle I see is I, I don't really get how... Um, the vision of Drogo and Rago fits in with how she dies. Uh, yeah, so it, it's not bad. I don't hate it, but I don't think it's true. I'm going to plonk it, plonk it around here-ish. It's not, it's not tinfoil, it's just like, you know, an interpretation. There you go. Ah, now here's, here's, here's a theory for you. Uh, we've got Bran messed with Ares. So, the same way that Bran, as we know, messed with Hodor, this idea is that Bran got all up in Ares Targaryen's head and got the whole burn them all thing going. And this is not terrible. I, I there There is something going on here, and the one piece of evidence for this, I think is that when Bran has a shit ton of flashbacks, um, a few of them include Ares screaming, burn them all. Um, now, this there's not really any anything to indicate explicitly that Bran is there in those flashbacks. I'd have to go through... That'd be an interesting idea. Maybe I'll have to do that when I get to those episodes in Season 6, uh, going through them and, like, categorizing, you know, if Bran actually affected these scenes. Because this is, um, after the door, I think. Yeah. So, so after we know that Bran can fuck with people in the past. So, you know, 
I'm not the biggest fan of it because I think that Eris's uh, descent into madness is already explained. I think that there's already enough going on there that we don't really need a, a tree wizard messing with his brain. And and besides, if there is a tree with a tree wizard messing with his brain, it could just be Blood Raven. Like, oh, sorry, sorry, Three Eyed Crow. <laughs> there is no Blood Raven, so I, I'm gonna put it a bit higher than uh, Puppet Master Brand. I, th I think it's I think it's cooler than that. Uh, oh, and do I want to put it? N no, I, I I'll put it maybe over here actually. Is this some um, two axis? system working out for everyone, everyone vibing with it. I think it's really good. Okay, um, we've got gas leak. So, th this is a joke. Th this one's not, this is a shit theory, but like someone just put this in. Um, and, and the explanation for this is that the hot springs under Winterfell released a noxious gas the noxious gas that made the planning during the long night episode so bad so um that the characters were literally um hallucinating or or you know uh, uh, under the influence of uh, of a, a fucking gas leak uh, and that's why that's why the long night specifically was so silly and i and you know this this is dumb, and the only reason I bring it up is because um it's a reference to, uh, Community season four, the fourth season of Community, as you might gather, uh, which a lot of people, f uh, you know, in the show it's attributed to a gas leak, which is a funny joke they do, but and then it's like taken on this idea in the wider community of Community uh, and pop culture in general that oh season four of Community is really bad. And it's because of the gas leak. And it's like, I, I, I honestly like, I love Community. It's a great show. And season four, I think, is its worst season. But it's not that bad. It's honestly, uh, I don't think it's terrible. So I, I just wanted to bring that up so I could, so I could tell, tell you all that Community season four, it's not as good as the rest of the show, but it's fine. I, I like uh, it, it's better than most sitcoms. Um, so this one is a theory about the world of Game of Thrones um, that the n Night King was winter, and the thinking behind this is that once the Night King is slain, um, and not so long after that, John goes beyond the wall, and there's grass sprouting, you know, out of the ground and, and the thinking there is that, oh it must, okay it's spring now which would make that this winter extremely short a and it coincides not too poorly with the night king being slain so night king being winter means that the world's uh biological systems are now completely ruined because winter it turns out is pretty important to all of these things that have developed in a world that has winter. Um, the other thing is that when they go to King's Landing, in literally the episode after the Night King is slain, it, do it doesn't look too wintry. Even though um, in Season 7, Episode 7, it's snowing in King's Landing. We never see that again. As soon as we get to Season 8, it's, it's sunny old Dubrovnik again. So... Um, this, it's a, it's a fun little theory. I, I don't think the showrunners would have considered it. Um, I kind of like it, but it didn't happen. <laughs> okay, and then we have the same guy, I think, yeah, Ethan Mercier. He submitted that Robert New burned them all. Like, he knew that Ares was all about that. He, he knew that Ares was calling for these things. And the, I, don't, I don't really know if we can call this a theory, because it's true. We saw Jamie tell Robert that this happened. <laughs> um, but, but, but then it's kind of like, 
how much about that does Robert internalize considering Jamie, Jamie's actions? Does he then still think that Jamie is a dishonorable, uh, um, you know, oath breaker for killing an old man, stabbing him in the back, you know, breaking his vows? Or does he understand that Jamie had to kill Eris? So, so I, I think that's what's going on here. And given the way that Robert reacts and continues to talk about Jamie afterwards, I don't think that he really does internalize that. Or if he does, he doesn't really care. Because Robert is a warrior. Robert thinks that... Oh, what am I trying to say here? I, mm, it's an interesting one, I think. <clears throat> What do I think of it? it? It definitely, like, it happened, man. Uh, and and the only questions about it are interpretation. So, it happened. Yeah, I don't, it's not that important to me. I'll put it there. It's no brothel, but I'll give it that. <laughs> this thing that actually happened? Yeah, it's nothing compared to my head cannon. Oh, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. We have Drogo is a horse, baby. This is another Glimbus theory. Um, or at least... I'm sure other people have thought of it, uh, as I've been told by the comments many times over. I already thought of that. Like, great, man, make a video. Um, <laughs> so, if you haven't seen my series, which most of you haven't, what are you doing? Get on that. Um, Drogo is a horse. This is my blood magic theory. Uh, it, it's book. It's book based, but I guess it kind of holds theory in Game of Thrones as well. Not, not really as much, because blood magic is a lot less defined, even considering how how ill-defined it already is in the books. Uh, Drogo being a horse. Let me see how it translates to Game of Thrones. I think it's still possible, because when we look at Drogo in Fire and Blood, when Daenerys confronts Miri out on that plateau, he... He, he seems the kind of way you would expect a horse soul to operate in a human body. And, you know, he's still alive. Um, whereas Drogo was certainly going to die. And then they killed the horse. And then when they left, Drogo was alive. So, in summation, my theory is that Miri uh, took Drogo's soul... And in, in, in his body, he put the horse soul. That was the point of the horse. And Miri used um, these souls to birth the dragons, is my thinking. But the motivation falls apart in Game of Thrones because um, I don't think Miri wanted to birth the dragons in Game of Thrones. Listen to what she says. There's no way she wants that. Um, whereas in A Song of Ice and Fire, there's a lot more to support that that's actually what she wanted to do. So... In Game of Thrones, I like Drogo as a horse, but I am actually not in support of it. I, I, I in all conscience, cannot... Um, I'm going to put it a little higher than that. I like it more than Night King being winter. This is difficult. There's not enough room on the love scale. Alright, here we go. We have... Here's another production theory. Now, this one pertains to two actual people and their feelings towards one another. So, I, I, I don't want to, like, be too speculative. I just want to calmly go into what appears to have happened. And this is that Lena hated Jerome. I, and, like, I, I, I don't know these people. All I know is w what the press has reported. So... As I've alluded to several times, as I'm sure many of you know, um, Cersei Lannister and Bronn only appear in one scene throughout together throughout the entire show. It's the scene in season three, episode one, and they do not look at each other. Um, and then every other time where the two characters could plausibly be together, which is a lot, they spend a lot of the show in the same location, right? They never appear together. And um, I call this out specifically in my video on the dragon and the wolf, where Bronn is like, hey, Podrick, let's leave. So that um, 
they don't have to put Lena Headey and Jerome Flynn in the same location. And the reason for this is that apparently the two of them dated a long, long time ago and it didn't end so well. So, um, apparently there was some... At least it's been reported, I'm not sure if it's true, that Lena had this clause in her contract about not having to film with Jerome Flynn. And I... And that's kind of weird because there is the one scene where they did do that. I I don't know, I don't know what's going on there. Um, now, I I don't know Lena Headey. She seems lovely. Uh, from everything I've seen, it doesn't look like there's too much hate inside of her. So I don't know if the term hate is really warranted here, especially for something that happened in the past. But uh, then again, I don't know what happened between them. I'm just rambling about two people I don't know. Um, so renew your subscription to TMZ. <laughs> TMZ, could you imagine? Um, so I, I think that there's, that there's probably something going on there, and I can't rate what I think, like, I don't like that they don't like each other. I love that they don't like each other. Like, no, I can't really do that. So I'm just gonna get rid of this, and we'll have talked about that, and now it's over. So, moving on to the next thing. Oh, we've got, um... Uh, so, I, I said this in my long night vi video, that Melisandre is Sirio Pharrell. <laughs> so, so the idea here is that when, when Sirio escaped from Meryn Trant in the pointy end, no, 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 he didn't run away and become Jack and Hagar, he ran away and became Melisandre. And the reason I said that was because Mel randomly... Um, quoted Sirio to Arya in season 8 episode 3 she said what do we say to the god of death uh, basically telling Arya to you know go on kill the night king go ruin the plot and um and that was the explanation i had for it that Melisandre is actually Sirio Pharrell this is a joke um it's stupid just like all of your other stupid theories um it's not true and honestly if it were true i would i would want to kill whoever made it true so thanks for, for submitting that hail the orange <laughs> uh we've got john is fireproof <laughs> um this this is not true <laughs> it's it just literally isn't true so so the idea here is that um it is um it is fireproof because he's a Targaryen, and Targaryens are fireproof. And also, in the Long Night, he doesn't get burned by a dragon. However, in in um season one, he's burnt by a lamp that he picks up to save Jaor when those whites attack him. And then that that burn on his hand stays for like you, you see it later on. So no, John isn't fireproof, unfortunately. Um. This is just not a thing. This corner is going to get pretty crowded because it's just things that I think are incorrect. <laughs> okay, so here. Okay, this is a good one. We've got Arya is Azora High. AA is Azora High. Just, 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 just deal with that. Um, so this is. I, 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 I hate this. <laughs> So, th this is a legitimate theory someone gave me about, um, oh wait, no, the theory says that Ned was Azor High and Aya is Lightbringer, which is, oh boy, that's a whole other kettle of fish, um, but, but it, it's, it's tying together a bunch of ideas and trying to come up with a justification for Aya killing the Night King. When really, I think the justification for that is Benioff and Weiss like Macy Williams. I think that's all you've got to go to work with there. And I'm sorry to tell you that, but that's ba that's basically what it comes down to. Um, Jack and Nagar knew that Ned was a Zora. Okay, so, so, so there is something funky going on with Jack and Nagar. I'll give you that. Why is there a faceless man in the black cells? Why is there a faceless man going to the wall? In the books... This is super interesting and leads to a whole mess of theorizing. And I think the, um, uh, Preston Jacobs, uh, one of his best series, is about the faceless men. Um, so, so yeah, maybe check that out. Uh, it's fucking awesome. Um, 
And yeah, what the fuck is going on there? Why is there a faceless man hanging out in the black cells of Winterfell? Why is Yorin allowed to take him out of the black cells? What crime did he commit to be in the black cell? It's just so weird. So I I get that this is kind of like a oh but well well he was there because he he needed to find Arya to to be um to to like help her become the savior and stuff like that. But then you you pay attention to everything else the faceless men the faceless men say throughout the show and it's like well hang on they're not trying to create a savior they're trying to indoctrinate a little girl um at every step. The faceless, like, they don't want her to be Arya. When, when they kick her out, Jacken tries to bring her back in. When she leaves, I mean, she has to kill the waif firstly. So maybe say, oh, that's a test for the Night King. Which is like, what? How is random woman a test for blue Satan? Then Jacken's like, okay, I'm going to let you go now. And then, ah, oh, oh, no, I hate it, and it's not true. <laughs> I is not a Zora High. I is a Coke. Okay, um, we've got. Now, oh wait, this looks really stupid. Oh, this looks really stupid. So, oh no, that's that's Robert plus Cersei's Gendry. It is really stupid. Okay, cool. Um, oh, now here's an interpretation that is kind of interesting. We've got. Actually, no, it's not that interesting. It, it, it's, a, it's a little silly. But, so, the Valonqar. The thing with the Valonqar is that it's never mentioned in the show. Not once. In Maggie's prophecy, she doesn't mention it. She does the, um, you'll have three kids and, you know, gold will be their crowns, gold will be their shrouds. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that, that's it. That's all she says. <laughs> She doesn't even do the thing with Malara and the well. And it, it... So... I don't know why people obsess over the Valonqar when it comes to the show. Because it's not mentioned once. It, 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 it appears to be book only. But this interpretation is that the Red Keep is the Valonqar. And this is kind of a justification for the way that Cersei ends up dying in Season 8. Um, the Red Keep is the younger of the two keeps, the older being the Aegon Fort that Aegon built when he landed in, well, in King's Landing. Oh, that's why they call it that. Who knew? Um, and 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 so the the Red Keep killed her. It like constricted her. It, it suffocated her, and that's why the Valonqar. It turns out is actually a building. And um, I I kind of like it, but I don't think that this interpretation is at all what was intended. But then again, who cares? It's an interpretation for a reason. So if you like that, then it, you can you can basically consider this one true if you want to. I I just don't think that um, it I can do that. <laughs> uh, then we've got Stannis is the destined hero and failed. Stannis, uh, let's say he's a failed Azor High. That's a that's a way of putting that. So. Is this... Oh, wait. Stainus. We've got Stainus Baratheon. Um, is a failed Azora High. Um, Alright. In the show, I don't think there is an Azora High. I don't think that it's a thing. I, 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 I think that... See, it kind of coincides with my belief in the books, which we'll talk about later on, maybe some other day. Not not today, it turns out. There's so many of these to get through. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> but Stannis... Melisandre prophesies that Stannis is a Zora High reborn and that he's like, they, they, they save the world. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and then he goes ahead, fails at conquering King's Landing, goes to the north, kicks some wildling ass, tries to take back Winterfell, fails... So, I, I I can see the the failed part of this, but Azor High, I mean, he does enable the Night's Watch to save the Wildlings, which later allows Jon to be resurrected, which means that he can take back Winterfell, and then in the battle against the White Walkers, he can yell at a dragon. Um, 
And then I guess you can argue that John saved the world by killing Daenerys. I, I, like you could say that if you really wanted to, if that's your if that's your vibe. Um. So. Look, kind of, Stannis is kind of a failed. Like yeah, you know, it's an interpretation, and it's not an awful one. I, I'm not. I'm just gonna chuck it here on on the. Um, no, I don't hate it. it. It should actually go around here. I think. Not that small though. Come back, Stannis. Please. All right. Uh, the, the the person who submitted that gave a lot more detail. Now maybe I should have a look at that. Uh, it's all just kind of tying um, Stannis to the Nissan to the you know Azor High prophecy. Um, oh, and the person who said that, um, Dragalski, said uh, that their English isn't mother isn't their mother tongue. Uh, me neither. You've done a great job though. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah. So so the idea is that Stannis was supposed to be a Zora High, but abandoned the path by you know killing his brother with a shadow, um, Selyse killed herself instead of, you know, the Nissa Nissa thing where, where Zora High kills him, kills her, so, yeah, it, 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 might be, it might be a bit of a cope, actually, um, to justify Stannis's, uh, dishonorable discharge in season five, so we've got some more production theories coming up, we've got Dave and Dan ruined Game of Thrones on purpose. This is an interesting one, isn't it? So this person said um, they ruined it on purpose as a fuck you to all the criticisms in a classic narcissist twist on the captain going down with the ship. If I can't have it, no one can, and I'll burn it to the ground for all I care. Um, so this is they ruined it out of spite to all those nasty internet critics. Who, who just couldn't accept that that the show has become worse. <laughs> and, um, no, I don't think this is true. I don't think they ruined the show on purpose out of spite. And the reason for that is public perception of the show was still really high, was still really good going into season eight. And it's only around the long night that people, re that, like, the general public... I'm not talking about us weird nerds on the internet who obsess over everything. I'm talking about the people who watch the show in pubs. I'm talking about mum and dad. I'm talking about, you know, Chris from The Office who stands at the water cooler and asks, so did you see the episode last night? And, and, and I'm talking about those people. And, and they didn't have a problem with the show until The Long Night. Some of them had a problem with Beyond the Wall. But the long night is like the big public turning point for the show. So I and of course season eight was fully written um, before the long night aired. So I don't think that I don't think that this is true, um, and I don't like it either because because it's mean. So it's it's not true, and oh my god, this corner is just gonna build up to the whole side of the. I'm gonna have to shrink all of those. All right. <laughs> then we have another one, which is that they ruined God Game of Thrones on purpose, not out of spite, but because they are lazy. Um, this one is just that they lost interest after season four. I think they lost interest after season three, to be honest, because, you know, we have on record that they wanted to do the show to bring the Red Wedding to the screen. And as soon as they had done that, eh, you know. And you see cracks starting to form basically as soon as um the red wedding happens so i think that that is a lot more um plausible but i don't think they did it on purpose I i'm just gonna say dave and dan lost interest around season four you know uh hang on let me do it like that okay and i'll put this at you know i like the idea and it seems kind of likely. Okay, um... Oh, now, this is a good theory. And I say that not because it's true, but because, um... Uh, well, I kind of have to keep up appearances. This one is that, um... 
I am am David Benioff. Um, and and you have to. You have to discount this one immediately because of how much I hesitated in how to spell Benioff. And I th- is that right? <laughs> is it one N, two Fs? I can never remember. Anyway, um, shut up. Don't think about that. Uh, we've got Bran is behind everything again. We've already done that. Um, oh, this is a good one. <laughs> Everyone poisoned Joffrey. So... There's a lot of... There's still a bit of confusion around what happened at the Purple Wedding. Uh, the stated canon is that Peter teamed up with uh, the Queen of Thorns to poison Joffrey to make him dead and kill him so that he would no longer be alive. Um, but it, actually, <laughs> um, there's a lot more people involved in that. Um, Oberyn poisoned Tywin, uh, Joffrey, Tywin poisoned Joffrey, Pycelle, Sansa, Cersei, Tommen, even Joffrey poisoned Joffrey. And, and uh, th- there's, a, there's a Reddit thread that explains all of this. Um, do forgive me, I'm going to have to navigate to Reddit briefly. Um, so th- all of them have good motives for, for poisoning Joffrey, including, um, well, 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 Sansa, obviously, her yeah, motives are clear. And uh, she fell asleep during the wedding. And uh, oh, hang on, that's a this is all book shit. I don't. I, she didn't. She doesn't fall asleep in the wedding in the show. What are you talking about? Um. Yeah. No. This. This is. This is really. Sh- this is. This is dumb. So that's that's going. Okay. So we've got ah. Drogon understood. Um, the throne when he burnt it capital T p- because you know proper noun it's a proper noun isn't it um, I'll just check the chat for the first time in a while there are 931 people watching that's hello everybody so um, Drogon understood the throne this is that um, you know that idea that uh, a lot of people had a go, including me, um, had a go at uh, the the series finale when Drogon, instead of killing Jon Snow, who he, who just murdered his mother, he burns an inanimate object that he's never seen before, um, because uh, the implication being that he understands its symbolism, that. That, that greed for the Iron Throne is what actually killed Daenerys and, and not, you know, the knife that Jon Snow put inside of her. So, yeah, um, no. Um, th- th- it's a cope, but let's go through it anyway. Um, so, it's... Tyrion tells us in Season 6 that dragons are smart. Um, I, I think he says that I just watched this episode. I should know. Uh, he says that they they're they're actually maybe smarter than humans, and then we have examples of many uh, outbursts of vengeance uh, for lost loved ones throughout the show. So, um, I, I don't know. I I still think it's stupid because regardless of how smart dragons are, even the smartest person when unfamiliar with a system of symbols, is not going to be able to immediately interpret um, what uh, what the Iron Throne means, I I think. I think that that is silly. Um, If the show had previously established that souls can go into bonded animals upon death, then... um, Daenerys's mind burning the Iron Throne through Drogon's body would have been a bit more sensible, but as it is, that doesn't exist, and I think that this is not true. I think that, I, um, I think it's more likely that he missed. So I, I think I don't, I don't really like. I, I, I wish it were true. I, I wish that they had done the legwork to make this possible, but they hadn't. So. I'm gonna put it a bit higher up, but I, I don't think it's I don't think it's possible. 
Okay. Moving on. Moving right along then. Aha. We've got a good one. That was a good one too. We've got Kyburn made the jetpacks. So, this is um, obviously really important. Um, the show never actually goes into who made the jetpacks or where they came from. They just kind of show up around season 5 and there's no explanation for it. It's a big mystery, but no one talks about it. There's no Talking Thrones video about where the jetpacks came from. So, um, uh, so I have to do the legwork. Um, or, or rather, uh, Mr. A-List, who submitted this, has to do it. So, Kyburn is the theory here, um, who, who's thus far been shown to be a brilliant man. He brings a guy back from the dead. He constructs an anti-dragon weapon. He builds a shrink ray that, um, that brings cities closer together. And he teleports characters on occasion, including himself and entire cities, even after he has died. So... Um, the idea is that Kyburn is so smart that he probably has some idea of how to reforge Valyrian steel and how to create jetpacks. So, I think that, like, as far as, um, origins for the jetpacks, I think that Kyburn is a pretty good bet. Because, um, he shows up in Season 3, he, he rises to power, um, over Season 4. Um, in season five, he, he becomes, you know, quite a big deal as Cersei's main go-to confidant. Hey, help me out with this kind of guy. Um, and I think that that's a, like, that, that makes sense for when the jetpacks arise. But the whole here is that, like, we follow Kyburn around a lot, and there's no actual, you know, explicit evidence of him crafting this kind of thing. So, um, this is a joke and I'm deleting it. Um... <laughs> uh, uh, this is another cope about uh, how there's going to be two more seasons of the show the, hang on yeah it's, it's, it's about how the show isn't actually over and it will end well oh, oh my sweet summer child uh, uh, this is basically the same as Season 8, Episode 7. Um, I'm also going to put this uh, slash extra seasons. Alright, I'm just going to add that down there. There we go. Same idea. Um, this is... Huh, I didn't see that that was a Game of Thrones one. Okay, so someone said... No, this is fucking dumb. I'm not going to put that in the... <laughs> I'm not putting that in my stream. <laughs> uh, some of you people. Okay, we've got Crispy Bill. Is Arthur Dane. Um, now, do I... Th I'm, I'm just not... No, fuck it. <laughs> so, okay, this is an actual one. We've got the Waif is Aya. In a Tyler Durden kind of way. So the, the 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 waif is like an expression of 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 Arya's inner struggle, a and uh, the 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 notion here is that every time the waif does anything, um, it's when Arya's around, except for that one time, um, when um, when she goes to Jacken and is like, "Hey, I'm gonna go hunt Arya," and Jacken's like, "You should go do that," um. And, and the interpretation there is that uh, that was actually Arya saying, hey, I'm going to go f sort this shit out. And, 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 and Jack, and he's either in the no, he's like, ah, yes, the Tyler Durden thing is happening. Or, <laughs> or he's like, well, this is insane and I don't really want to mess with it. So you go on and, and just deal with your own shit. Um, <laughs> and, and so... So Arya killed Lady Crane. Arya stabbed herself several times in the chest before diving through a filthy canal. Arya um, killed herself in a dark room with a candle, and and then then went into then confronted Jack and said, "I'm leaving now." And Jack and was like, "Okay, the Tyler Durden thing is over, I guess." <laughs> Um, so I think it's obvious that I, it, it's not, it's not the, it's not the worst idea. 
if if they had done this, it that that could have been pretty cool, but they didn't. <laughs> um, I I I don't hate it. I I do not hate it. Um, I actually kind of like it, but there's no way. Well, not no way. I I think there's very little of a way. Let's put it over here. Um, I've just decided that I don't that Brand is the Night King is less likely than that. Okay, so. Oh, now here's another one. This is an interesting one. Dave and Dan turned characters into mouthpieces. And what I mean by that, well, well what the person who submitted this uh, meant by it, is that as the show went on and um, there was less source material for the writers to, you know, uh, pull dialogue from, pull arcs from, the, the showrunners turned these characters into expressions of their own ideas rather than you know extensions of the characters that they had already established so um this is it's kind of an extension an extension of how petty we think dave and dan are so for example um we hear that um ian McElhenney pushed back against Barristan being wrote out, ring, written out of the show, and that's kind of eh, because Ian McElhenney said a lot of things over the years, including a thing that George R.R. R. Martin was like, no, that's not true. <laughs> so, eh, I, I'm, I'm not too sure about what happened there, but they did kill Barristan in a really bad way. Um, uh, they made... So it just seems, yeah, they were using characters to just say things that they wanted to. Um, which, like, that's that's kind of what writing is. You use characters to say what you want to. But, but the difference between this and, say, how a writer like George R.R. R. Martin would use a character to say the things he wants them to is that Dave and Dan use them to, like, belittle others, express their own, you know shit ideas <laughs> um oh god yeah it, it, it so what this person submitted is a bunch of disconnected ideas about how characters were misused to basically say things that Benny and Weiss wanted to say directly to the audience like um uh what's a good example they've provided ah uh, yeah so Tyrion tells Davos that he'll be happier if he doesn't dwell too hard on the point of fighting for the Lord of Light and and Beric to John Beric says the same kind of thing to John in Beyond the Wall you know maybe we don't need to understand more of that so that's basically the writers telling the audience hey um, you should stop being invested in this thing we've gotten you invested in because we don't have an answer. Y you know? Um. Oh, yeah, and then, oh, there's an incredible scene that I'm going to get to soon in the piss take about, um, Richard E. Grant, who plays the, uh, the playwright and producer in Bravos, the bloody hand that Arya, you know, infiltrates. Um, he says some... Out, he says some crazy stuff about you know oh all of you you actors have ideas about what your characters should do and what you should say and how I should treat you but you don't know anything I'm the producer I'm the guy in charge here and and you need to respect me more and my god guys come on <laughs> um maybe move it a little bit off the nose. So I, I think the idea was that they were gonna they were trying to play that as like a joke about self obsessed directors, but it's it's really not. It's just them saying that themselves. <laughs> okay, so this one's insane. We've got um. Hang on, let me put, let me put this one somewhere. Uh, I I think that this is true. I, I think that this is uh, it's kind of true. Let me put it like here ish. 
Okay. Uh, we've, so this one's insane. We've got Shay is a faceless man. Um, and, and the reason I say that that's insane is that... I, I, okay, so she says in season two that, that she's cut pe people's faces off. <laughs> and uh, she's super secretive about her past. And... And, um, and she's from Essos. And, 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 well, she doesn't say she's from Essos. She says she's from not here. So, no, I don't know. There's, there's really nothing here. I think that she's just, um, just an enigmatic person. Um, if she was a faceless man, why would, she, why would Tyrion be able to kill her? Faceless men are supposed to be insane assassins. Like, uh, did you see the shit Arya was doing? Brienne has trained with uh, with heavy weaponry. By he I mean, like, you know, a full-size sword for, like, over a decade. Arya was hit with a stick for, for, for like, a few months in Bravos, and And when she gets back... Arya just dismantles Brienne with, with a piddly little dagger. So, oh no, she uses needle as well. Yeah. So, so this idea that Shay has the same capabilities as Arya, no fucking way. <laughs> Tyrion kills her. Tyrion. T Tyrion is in the show. He has no combat prowess. He beats a guy's head in with a shield and and that's it that's that's what he does and then he murders a, a he's an old man on the shitter and an ex-girlfriend in bed so there's i don't think that I, I think this is silly and i think there's no way i'm sorry i really don't like shitting on the theories of people who have genuinely submitted something thank you so much for submitting i think your idea is dumb um, so then there's this idea that, um, Sansa intentionally weakened Jon. And this is at the Battle of the Bastards. So, Sansa not tell- So we all know that Sansa didn't tell Jon about the Knights of the Vale, and that that's really fucking dumb. So, th this is kind of a cope, honestly. But it's also a bit of a conspiracy that, that justifies what happened there. And the idea is that Sansa- was going to use the Knights of the Vale to win the battle no matter what, but she wanted John's like the, the forces loyal to John to suffer a lot of losses before she won the battle. And that is what happens. Uh, John's army of like a few northern houses and wildlings uh, d does take a lot of damage, and then Peter shows up with the Knights and, and saves the day. And, um... So, if that was Santa's land, it worked out, obviously. Except it didn't really work out because John is named King in the North anyway, for some reason. Even though Peter won the battle, Sweet Robin won the battle, Sansa kind of won the battle, John lost the battle. <laughs> um, and Sansa also wanted Rickon dead, is the idea. Uh, this, this person has submitted that uh, Sansa also wanted John dead. So that she would be the undisputed ruler of Winterfell, uh, and uh, and like um, I would have liked it if that is what they wanted to do, if that is the story they went with, if that is the character they were writing. However, it isn't. So I'm gonna say that I I really I actually really would have liked that story for Sansa and Jon, but uh, that isn't what happened. Unfortunately. Okay, so we've got, um, oh god, we're finally here. We have reached it. We have Tyrion Targaryen. We have Tyrion is the son of Aerys and Joanna. And, um, I, uh, n no. I, I don't like it. <laughs> so, in, in the show, I think there's even less evidence for it than in the books. Because basically all you get is um, the scene with the dragons, 
where they're like okay with him and that that's that's all <laughs> you also get Tyr- Tyrion saying I am your son you get Tywin saying you are my son uh, so look <sighs> my thoughts on this are, are publicly available I do not like it and I also don't think that in the show it's likely at all I don't think that this holds any water in the show in the books it's a different conversation there are a lot more things going on with, with the timeline concerning Eris, Joanna, and Tywin. Um, and the ideas of chimerism and heteropaternal superfecundation, which of course we've all, we all remember from that video. Um, we have Tyrion's fucked up description. We have parallels to Maelys. We have a bunch of parallels, which I, I didn't really like getting into in, in, in that video, but they are there and they're not there in the show. Okay, so so I, I think that, I th- think that in the books, Tyrion Targ isn't that compelling, except for um, the Chimera theory, and in the show, it's even less likely. That's my stance. Okay, so we get, um, this one's interesting, Peter knows R plus L equals J, and I, what? It was my first um, was my first response when looking at this, but let's see what this guy has to say. Um, he has to say nothing actually. It, it seems to be a headcanon. Um, Peter knew of Jon Snow's true parents, but chose to remain quiet. How the fuck would he know that? Uh, like, it, it, what? How? I think that if any of the schemers know about this, um, it would be Varys. But then we find out that Varys didn't know. So no, he didn't know. Um, yeah, no, th- what? Um, I don't see why he would re- choose to remain quiet about this, especially when he was intentionally sowing chaos in Westeros. I think that revealing that there is a legitimate Targaryen heir in the North um, that is tied to the Starks, that creates so much chaos that he could have used, um, but but then just chose not to. I I think that I don't think this is true, and I think that I I I, I don't like it. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry, so sorry. Um, then we have um is is this is yep this is this is this is a joke. Someone just said that um Ned isn't a pigeon. He's Drogon. Um, anyway. And, and I guess that actually works out better in the timeline than the pigeon thing because Drogon is born after Ned dies. So, n- no, but also, uh-huh. uh, we've also got... Oh, so this one's interesting. This is a season six related one. Um, Marjorie <clears throat> had a plan. And this is that, you know, the rose that she draws on a napkin and gives to her grandma when they meet up in that one scene that like uh briefly indicates that there's actually something going on but then it turns out there's not well this theory posits that there actually was something going on before there wasn't and um that is that marjorie had a plan to basically uh manipulate every other power player out of king's landing and then just use Tommen as a puppet. As we saw before all of the shit started to go down, Marjorie did hold a lot of sway over Tommen. This is why the whole Sparrow thing started in the first place. Ciri wanted to, uh, Cersei wanted to use the religious extremists to remove Marjorie's sway over Tommen. So that's how that happened, and, and, and um, it, in, it interrupted uh, Marjorie's plan to basically usurp the Iron Throne for herself by using Tommen as a puppet, who we see Tommen is very pliable, so that makes sense. Um, so her relation with the common folk in King's Landing, uh, like, it, it sways public reception of the monarchy from we hate them all, you know, the riot in season two, to, um, oh, we love you. They cheer for Marjorie and Joffrey when, when they open the doors at the Sept that one time. Um, so yeah, people love Marjorie, and then, um, hang on, so yeah, then her plan changes because Loras, 
Loris gets imprisoned and she wants to, like, get him out, obviously. Because, A, she's his sister and she loves him. And, two, um, him being guilty of the things he's accused of would really tarnish her name. And that's not good for popularity, obviously. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's it's kind of a cope, but it's a pretty well it's a pretty well put together one. Um, I like it, but again, I d- I do not think it happened. I'm gonna put it around here. Yeah, that seems right. Let me shrink it a little more. There we go. Okay, and that's actually the end of the game. Of th- actually, it's not all of them. I think I skipped a few. Oh no, I got that one. Sorry, just doing some, uh, some going through. I got through these way quicker than I thought I would. So we have um, a few more really dumb ones. Um, I'm going to skip that one and go straight to... Season 8 is a battle between Bran and Euron. Hang on, let me... Uh, yeah, that's better. So this is... This is weird um, in, in, in the show. This is really weird, honestly. Um, because what Euron isn't really paired with Bran ever in 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 the show, uh, in the books totally. <laughs> like, sure, I can absolutely see things coming down to some like supernatural wizardry mind fucky showdown between Euron and Bran. Uh, sure, why not? But <laughs> um. In the show, there's absolutely nothing going on here. Um, so this theory posits that Euron is as is like the same dude as he is in the books, with all of that um, ties to green searing and uh, and uh, uh, mind control and and uh, the the theory that he's a failed blood raven apprentice. And so so this idea, which I, I I'm sorry to tell you, is is like really it's just not true um that one of them wogged Daenerys to make her forget about the Iron Fleet (laughs) so I don't know again it's a cope but it's a pretty well put together one um so they were all pulling strings alongside Kyburn and his shrinking device to make Jaime forget about the innocence yep that all makes sense um okay so Yep, there's a slash S at the end of this, so I'm just going to put it at the top right, up with Brothel Bard. It's just as real as that. Um, yeah, nah. We've got... Um, this one's this one's interesting. And you know what? Marjorie is bi. Bisexual. For those of you <laughs> not up on the LGBT lingo, bi is short for bisexual. Um, this idea is... I mean, it's basically true. <laughs> so, um, it's an interpretation, but it, it it's a it's a pretty good one. So we've got um, Mar- Marjorie is um, she speaks in really sexually liberated terms for um a noble woman, um, in a society where chastity is viewed as really important i mean the show kind of drops that later on with making fun of brienne for being a virgin i mean she's an unmarried woman why wouldn't she be a virgin she's a noble woman come on what are you doing um yeah so there's just a few little lines that indicate that marjorie's into chicks there's really not that much, honestly. <laughs> it, it's just kind of like maybe. I don't want to really describe. I, I'm not the kind of person to ascribe sexualities to fictional characters, mainly because um, if I did that, then like I wouldn't have anything else to do with my time. Um, it, it'd it'd be all consuming. Um, I liked. The, I I liked the fan fiction of um of of um Viserys showing up to Westeros instead of Daenerys, but um <laughs> that's as far as we're taking this. 
Um, you know what? I, I think it's I think it's kind of around here. Like I, I have no thoughts one way or the other. Um, but I do I do think it's kind of likely, given the way that she talks about stuff. Um. So I, I'm not gonna write this on because it's really dumb. But I've got Littlefinger was um L Littlefinger didn't have a jetpack. Is this theory? which I, I already kind of disagree with on the face of it, but he was using Gendry as a taxi. Um, <laughs> so, and, and that, it kind of works out because Gendry reappears in the story in season seven in King's Landing. And at that point, Littlefinger has been, is in Winterfell and um, he doesn't go anywhere else after then. So yeah, it kind of works out, honestly. Um, but I don't see how Peter would have gotten a hold of Gendry around season five when he started teleporting places. And also Gendry's renowned for his, um, immense speed. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I'm still not sure if he could get to King's Landing that quickly. Uh, the other, the other point in favor of this is that uh, Littlefinger couldn't make it out of King's uh, out of Winterfell in season seven because his taxi was busy capturing a zombie. So, so that's maybe. Uh, so uh, next up, we've got the winners actually lose. This is kind of like a prediction for after the show. But let's talk about what could happen after the show, like you know, evaluating the world we're left off with. What happens? So all of the Stark kids who win actually die horrible deaths. Um, it's pretty obvious that Arya's crew... Um, Arya is, has never sailed before, and she somehow has a crew that are willing to follow her west to a place no one has ever been. That people don't even... Th like, people don't think anything exists except for the nutjob Farwinds, a bunch of extreme nutjob ironborn who no one pays attention to. So... Um, they resort to cannibalism, obviously, after being lost at sea and running out of food. John freezes to death after moving to the coldest point in the world in the middle of a horrible winter. And uh, Sandra Lannister gets thrown into the sea after she finds no support to fend off um, all the rebellions she faces. And um, I, th I feel like that one is actually the, the least plausible of them. I think John freezing to death and Arya being eaten by her crew are more likely than Sansa being thrown into the sea because she can't deal with some ironborn invasions. I actually think that Sansa being in charge of the North probably can rally a lot of the North, maybe most of it. Pro like, especially if we're supposed to run with this North Remembers idea from the books, which isn't really played on in the show, but if we afford them that, then I I, I think that Sansa's rule of the North... I, I mean, it's silly that she's just allowed to become independent, but then also... <clears throat> hang on a moment. The Iron Islands are no longer independent. Um, The agreement Ash, uh, Yara had with um Daenerys was hey, we'll help you, but we're going to be independent after this is all done. And then when they get to the meeting in the season finale, in the series finale, um, she's like, yep, Bran is my king now. So that's really dumb. That's really fucking dumb. And, um, and, and delegitimizes anything that could happen from the show's ending. Wow, people have submitted so many things while we've been talking. That's incredible. I have just a few more. Um, so the win is actually losing. Um, I don't think that it's what the showrun is intended, but I, I, I think I'm going to put it over around here because I think that it's, it's plausible given the ending of the show. And um, I like it. I, I like I like it a lot. So <clears throat> here we go. We've got, oh, we've already done Brand is the Puppet Master. Um, now here's one. We've got R'hllor is real. I think that's how you spell it. Hey, let me just look it up. I don't want to. I don't want to be a dum dum. Yeah, that is how you spell it. Okay. Um, R'hllor is real. This is interesting because um, we haven't talked about gods yet. 
so kind of because <laughs> I mean Th Thoros brings Beric back to life Melisandre brings Jon back to life they both are priests of R'hllor so it follows on that their god is actually real actually powerful and is is all cool like that um but the argument against that would be that um The, the power they exert isn't necessarily tied to one god or another because other m magical things happen. Um, uh, Danny hatches dragons and there's no one god explicitly tied to that. Uh, everything that happens to Bran is, is all old, old gods related. And then there's, I don't know, the, the faceless men magic and shit like that. Uh, so, uh, arguments that R'hllor is like the one real god, uh, I, I I don't I don't personally buy them. I don't think that it's, especially what, um, George R R Martin intended. We'll get to that when we talk about book theories in another stream. But for now, I just want to say, um, yeah, like. I think that magical power is real. I think that the, the things we see, like, a, a, and the people who do those things attribute that power to, you know, the faith system that they're already a part of. I, I think that that's kind of how it works. Because the whole lore and the great other and all of this stuff, like, it's all kind of hot air at the end of the day. And, and, so I I I I'm kind of in this like I I, um, I I agree with a part of this. I agree that there is there is uh like supernatural power. That's kind of obvious that that there's wacky shit going on, but to say that like R'hllor is the one god and 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 everything that happens is due to no 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 I I don't think that this is I don't think that that's the case maybe I should move it down down here yeah to, yeah to express that that um relationship I have with that idea so um then we have Sandra Landeser um in in season six Leanna Mormont calls Sansa Stark Sandra Landister and um it's really funny and so this <laughs> this is a really great theory that posits that um uh Leanna Mormont is a dumb kid who actually thinks that that's her name <laughs> and I I obviously love that but I do not think it's true <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we have uh, the the Lord of Storms End. So, j much like the Prince of Dawn, uh, there's nothing to go on here. Lord of Storms End. Who the fuck is the Lord of Storms End? Because Daenerys in um, season eight, episode four, says out loud to everybody, "Hey, does anyone know who the Lord of Storms End is?" And that's 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 a like a it's a shade so big you can make a really grand lamp underneath it. So, and then she's like, "Ah, Gendry is the new Lord of Storms End," and it's like, "Okay, I guess I guess whoever's there at the moment is just gonna have to fuck off." <laughs> um, ah, oh, God, it's stupid. So. So, so this is, uh, it's not really a theory, it's a question. Um, who, wh wh who's the Lord of Storm's End? And the answer is uh, nobody, there, there isn't one, because the show uh, didn't feel the need to provide one. And, and I guess that's really what it comes down to. Um, I, I don't even know if it's a they forgot. I think it's a they didn't see the relevance. And uh, I, I think they're wrong to have uh, not seen that relevance. But I, I, um, yeah, no. So there is no Lord of Storms End. Um, I'm gonna, I'm just, whoa, I'm just gonna delete that one because there's not really much we can do with it. Um, 
we've got the many-faced god. I oh yeah, here we go. Many-faced god is money. Okay, this comes from a book theory, as far as I can tell, and it's one that I really like. I I'm fond of this one. Oh boy, I am. Yes, indeedy. So, what's going on here is, it's an interpretation. And I think that it, it, it can coincide with a few other interpretations of what the many-faced god means. Because I, th I think the many-faced god is what it says on the tin. It's like, it, it, it's an amalgamation of many other faiths. Uh, like, like, you see all of those statues in the in the House of Black and White. There's the stranger. There's, um, uh, what's it gonna be, you know... Uh, I can't remember because so so much boring nonsense happens at the House of Black and White. But I think they have the Drowned God there, which is interesting because the Ironborn see him as a giver of life. Uh, I think, is there the Storm God? I, I don't know. The, the show's a lot more wishy-washy with religious figures than the books are. But then there's this idea that this many-faced God that you know all that you know all men serve and die for is money. And I don't think that the faceless men think this. I just think that it is a plausible metaphor, an interpretation of what happens in the story. And how, you know, characters act around money. Because if, if you're looking for a thing that all men seem to serve and all men seem to die for money is a pretty good uh you know answer to that question so i think that's pretty dope um so i really like it but i don't think it's on the show's mind i'm gonna put it basically in the middle here uh, up top all right uh maybe over here no no it's gotta be on the it's gotta be on the left side Maybe up here. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so that's actually all of the theories that I had before the stream started. So that's really great that I've managed to do that. Congratulations, me. Um, all right, here we go. So now what I must do is go through the theories that have just started coming in, which let's uh, let's have a looky loo. Holy shit! Calm down, you. Bit. Fifty theories have come through in the meantime holy shit okay <laughs> so um let's just uh so, so th there are some theories that are both canons not just game of thrones not just the song of ice and fire but both so i'm not sure if i should go through those now or in a different uh setting um i'll, I'll go through the new ones that are just game of thrones focused and see how we're going for time. So, so these will be ones that I have not prepared for at all, which is great. Uh, give me just a moment to filter through them. I'm sure a lot of them have been jokes. Good job, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm sure we're all going to have a laugh at them. Um, almost there. Lots of Game of Thrones ones. Okay, so that's both, both, Game of Thrones, and that's all of them. Okay, I should turn submissions off at some point, but uh, let's just uh, power on. See how we go. Whoa. I want to see just Game of Thrones theories. Thank you. Oh, whoops. Oh, that, that's the one that just came in. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we've got how many new ones to get through? Uh, 24. Okay, let's see what happens. I've got an hour left before I have to go. Alright, so we've got... Um, this one's dumb. Carl Tanner is a faceless man. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, m my take here is, uh, no. Like, what? Like, just because he's good at killing? No. Carl Tanner has... Like, his chosen backstory is that he was a cutthroat in Flea Bottom. 
I think it was Flea Bottom at least. Whoops. Uh, so we have Carl Tanner as a faceless man. Fine, I'll give him capital. Tal Kanner. What is happening? I, 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 my, my fingers have ceased to work. Um, I, I don't think this is true. But, you know, I, I wouldn't hate it so much. No, I actually would hate it. I would hate it if that was true. What, yeah, yeah, stop trying to put the faceless men everywhere. <laughs> faceless men are supposed to be a way bigger deal than this. Like, you can't just have a random person being one with no explanation and no explicit evidence. There's got to be more going on. Um, yeah, no, Carl Tanner's not a faceless man. He's just an asshole. <laughs> uh, the Three-Eyed Crow used magic to make Bran sterile. Oh, man, this one's a paragraph. Hang on. During his training to take place, take the place of Blood Raven. There is no Blood Raven in the show. It's the Three-Eyed Crow. Uh, he used the children of the forest magic to keep Bran from producing biological heirs in order to prevent a lineage of green seer kings ruling Westeros. Um, hang, I, I don't... Why would you need to use magic to make him sterile? Um, so, so the idea is that the Three-Eyed Crow wanted Bran to be king, but didn't want him to produce biological heirs so that his magic couldn't continue being in charge of Westeros. Um, yeah, I, I'm a bit confused. Um, this one... Wait, what? <laughs> I'm so lost. Hang on. What have you done? People just keep submitting shit. Holy crap. Um, where is it? Yeah, no. So someone just submitted... So someone's submission just says X made a video about it. And that could be a lot of things. X makes lots of videos. <laughs> uh, hang on. I've got more to sort through. I should turn submissions off. Let's be real. Oh boy, that's gonna be a good one when I get to that. I like I like what I've just seen. Um, that light, that latest one. Um, so no, I don't think the three eyed crow used magic to make Bran sterile. I think that if you wanted to make Bran sterile, you could just do it the old fashioned way. <laughs> um, I don't know what that one is. Podrick is gay. Um, I'm actually gonna write this one in. Podrick is gay. I don't think this is true. Because um, you see him hooking up with, well, at least hook in with those two chicks in The Last of the Starks after he drinks for saying that he's a virgin. Now, he then does later on join the Kingsguard, a, cel a celibate order of knights, which is, you know, maybe maybe that, that's like a, hey, um, I, 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 it, it's historically people have used that as a, you know, oh, he doesn't want to... It, 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 he wants this as an excuse for not having heterosex with 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 ladies and um no i think it's just they were trying to give him a conclusion to this um arc of becoming a knight i really think that's all it is i don't think podrick is gay um i don't have strong feelings about it although it does um no it doesn't delegitimize brothel bard you know i'm just going to put it right right down here i i don't think so but I don't hate it, you know? No, I don't like it. Uh, let's just put it... No, it's definitely above Gendry as Cersei's son. Let's put it here. Um, okay. Now, this isn't to say that it's as stupid as the chains came from the scythe. The chains came from the scythe is really dumb. Um, Podrick is gay is a lot less dumb. I just, you know, like it a little bit less. Um, so, we're done with that one. Missande manipulated Daenerys. Um, she kind of just arrived at some point. Danny took her with her on an adventure because she speaks a language, but then she uses the translating power to make Danny believe that she's the chosen one and driving her to do the thing. Um, ultimately, sacrifices her human form to push. Uh, um, 
to, to, okay to push Daenerys off an edge basically um, so that's an interesting interpretation of Missandei. Um I'll write that on Missandei manipulated Daenerys and I'm also going to say that I do not think it's true at all I think that Missandei is um, very face value as a character I don't think there's anything really duplicitous going on there. People in the... I, I've seen... I think I've seen people say that she's a faceless man in book canon. Because Missande in the books is a lot, like, weirder. She's way younger and really capable. And and people are like, what's going on there? I, I think it's... I, I think it's just George telling us, hey, hey, sometimes, sometimes kids can be really talented and also... Um, pushed to extreme, um, you know, capabilities when they are slaves. And that's the thing. D- Missande didn't just show up out of nowhere. She was Krasnitz's slave. She belonged to him, and she was part of the of the deal that Daenerys made with Krasnitz before, you know, killing him. <laughs> so, no, no, no. <laughs> This is fun. I recommend everyone do this. It's just great. You you get a lot of people to tell you their 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 favorite theories, and then you just sit there and say, "No." <laughs> um, and I also no, hang on. Let me just split it up so I can fit it closer. Damn it! This makes it look like I I I. Uh, where can I put this? I have to shrink it even further, and just tuck it in there. There we go. Nice and cozy in amongst all those other theories I don't like. <laughs> um, oh, here we go. It's um, it's all Bran's dream. Um, I'm surprised I didn't get to th- I didn't get this one sooner. So, um, obviously this sucks. <laughs> I hate it. Um, a- and the idea is this theory happens. Um. It starts at the end of episode one when Bran goes into a coma, um, and, and then everything is just just a dream, and uh, and I I think that people look to season eight as justification of this because you know he becomes king in the end in a really kind of implausible way, so it's kind of like oh dream logic has led Bran's mind to make himself king. And I think that as far as copes go, that's actually kind of fun. Um, but it's 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 still a dream, and everything was a dream twist ending, which, like, as far as tropes go, is fucking just terrible. So, um, we, we hate this. And I, and there's, and I really don't think there's a way. Um, I'm going to tuck it in here. I think it's worse than Tyrion Targ. Maybe I'm being too harsh on Tyrion's arc. Maybe it should be up it. No. Um, so there's that one. Dave and Dan are wargs and warged into us to make us like the show. Um, that's bullshit. I'm not writing it on. And also, um, the show is actually good for the first four seasons or so. It's actually really good. That's how they tricked us. Uh, Mira marries Gendry and they have the next heir. So that's a prediction going forward for after the show. Um, why would... Uh, Mira... What do you mean? Mira fell into a pit of tar as soon as she left Winterfell. And and, and she's she's going to be fossilized. They're going to discover her body in 67 million years and use her to, you know, operate a motor vehicle. Um, <laughs> okay, so this one's a bit of a cope about um, the Valonqar. Um, but that Jamie had his hand around Cersei's throat when they died. I, even though I don't think we saw that, and also why would he do that? <laughs> uh, no, th- uh, I think that's kind of silly. Um, again, the Valonqar isn't present. There's there's no Valonqar in the show. Don't worry about it. You don't have to try and figure out what like how that prophecy is fulfilled. You don't have to. It's not in the show. It's okay. Just go to the books and and come up with a, with a wacky theory there. Um. So Dario. Oh, this one's interesting. Dario follows Danny to Westeros and is poisoning her wine. So 
that's fucked up. Um, so he like covertly abandons Marine and follows her into Westeros, and uh, <laughs> so uh, by like sewing away on a ship or something, he starts poisoning her wine, and it makes her go mad. And th this is like payoff for his uh, really really early on. They established that he has uh, knowledge of uh, poisons and flowers and such. So that's kind of fun. Um, I'm not gonna write it on because <laughs> it doesn't really do much. <laughs> it, like it's, it's really small, and I think it's kind of dismissible on the face of it. Uh, Targaryens are wargs. This is an interesting one. So I I'm actually gonna write this one on. So Targs are wargs, and um, this one is I've heard this one before. It I think it's also um, it, it appears in Bookland sometimes. Um, and, and the idea is that um, controlling a dragon requires like a psychological bo or like a psychic bond with the animal. So um, there's a Preston Jacobs series, um, what is it, Genetics of Dragons in War, where he posits that I'm not only talking about Preston Jacobs on purpose, he just comes up, man. He's just in my mind rent free. Um, that he posits that the genetic, uh, you know, component for becoming a warg and becoming a dragon rider are basically interchangeable, and he argues that this might be why Rhaegar wanted to pursue Lyanna. So, so, that, so that's 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 just a kind of a tangential book thing from that. But um, now this is interesting because we see. In um, the Battle of the Bastards, the Siege of Marine, the, the really terrible part of an episode that they want you to forget, um, all three dragons are coordinate, uh, uh, like coordinate an attack on the um, slavers' ships, which says to me that Daenerys can control all three of them at once. Or they're very smart and coordinated amongst themselves already, even though um, Rhaegar and Viser Rhaegal and Viserion have been trapped beneath the pyramid for two years, and Drogon has just come back from being gone for two years. So, eh. No, he's just been gone for... Oh, no, he's been gone for, like, two years, yeah. So, um... I, I, I kind of like it as an explanation. It also lines up with Drogon burning the throne because Daenerys' mind goes into her. I talked about that earlier. Uh, it goes into him. Actually, is Drogon, um, dragon gender is kind of there. Um, anyway, yeah, um, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, there's very little to go on in the show for this, but there's also nothing to dismiss it. And I, I kind of like it. So there we go. Targs of Wargs. There you go. Um, who's next? We've got Ned killed Howland. What the fuck? Uh, after Lyanna's death and John's birth, Ned killed Howland Reed to keep the secret. Okay. So in, in the submission that um, someone who's called themselves Gandalf the Grey has, uh, has said, um, this is probably not true, but I've heard people use it to try and excuse bad writing. So he admits that it's a cope. Um, yeah, that seems pretty copish. Um, but it does explain where Howland went, but there's no fucking way. Um, Ned and Howland are supposed to be great friends. Ned would never. Um, I'm not even gonna write that on. Um, that, that one is just brand used Drogon to make a wheelchair ramp for when he, anyway, um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to even say that out loud. What the hell is that? That that seems like a fan fiction whose name that if I say it out loud, uh, um, it, it'll it'll haunt me. Um, so this this is a theory that they're all faceless men. <laughs> Everyone is a faceless man. Uh, yeah, I I guess that uh, that fills all the holes. Um, 
Um, oh, dude, that's not even a theory, man. Someone just submitted like a fact. Um, J John knew the battle. John, so this is like John screamed at, Vis at um undead Viserion because he knew the battle was lost. He was frustrated and like he was just yelling a bit. Like I don't see why else he would have been doing it. Um, I, because I don't think John is that stupid to think that he can defeat a dragon by screaming at it. But, but, like, he's ridden a dragon. He, he knows how powerful they are. He knows that noises cannot defeat them. <laughs> so, um, I'm, um, I'm not even gonna write that on. It's, it's just a fact. Yeah, John, John was just screaming because he was screaming. It wasn't necessarily at Viserion. So that's another aria is the prince that was promised one. Which, I, I think this one's supposed to be a joke, but um, we have already talked about that. I mean, Prince that was promised, Zora High, in the show, I'm not going to make a distinction between them, because what's the fucking point? Um, this one is... That's really weird. All of these new ones are super weird. You guys are so weird. Um, Dave and Dan are pro-Scottish independence because the North being the only one out of the Seven Kingdoms to get independence indicates that they want the North of Great Britain to be independent from the rest of Great Britain. So, um, um, what? Huh? Uh. Okay, so most of the theories that you guys have submitted since the stream has started are, are really, really bad. Really, really stupid. Um, someone just wrote in Johnsa, just, nothing else, just John and Son John and Sansa together, you know? Um, but the, the, sh the show is over and that didn't happen, so, huh? Alright, now, I really was expecting this to take a bit longer, but here we, here we are. Um, now, let me say that this is, this pales in comparison to the number of ice and fire theories we have. So how many have we gone to today? There's 53 there, and how many here? 73. We've talked about 73 things. And um, there are a few more here that I could talk about. But I'd, I'd rather just um hold off, and, and we'll pick up ice and fire theories uh, maybe tomorrow. I, I, actually, I, I should probably finish the, the video I'm working on before that. But, um... Yeah, this has been fun. It's been fun. Um, so, that, that's, this is kind of like just a test run, honestly. Before, um... Like, for the, the, the actual ice and fire theory one. Wanted to see how my knowledge holds up, firstly. And how, um, how this, like... How this system goes... You know, you know, this bad boy. Wee. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of... I, I, I'll go through the theories that you guys keep rolling in. But, um, you know, I think going through them at the moment, I, I'm going to have to categorize them. I'll, I'll turn them off later on. When's the next video? Uh, what's the next video? It's season 6, episode 2, bro. Doing season 6. Um, yeah, book theory is going to be way better. This, it'll be a lot more fun, a lot more in-depth. It'll take a lot longer. It will not be one stream. I can guarantee you that now. Um, uh, I can still hang around for a little bit. I just think we're done talking about theories for the moment. Um, maybe I should wait until next weekend to do it. You know, let, let even more theories roll in, um, and I can take the time to work on some videos that need to be done. Yeah, so um, I can see a lot of discussion going on in the chat, dude. Dude, just keep submitting stuff, and I'll um, I'll force my gremlins to go through them. They know who they are. Yeah, that's the other thing with book theories is there's like actual evidence to go on. So wh what I'm gonna do is once we're done with all this, I'll export the this image. Um, and let me just reposition it a little bit. Yeah, I'll export this image as... It, it's like a really big resolution, by the way. So you'll be able to dive in. Maybe I'll clean it up a bit. And I'm going to... My idea is to uh, take this stream and all the other streams I do about this and 
crop them down into in, into one big video for for public consumption. Um, and then after I'm done with that, yes, I'd like to go back to playing games on stream. I want to stream more often. Streaming is fun. I now have a much better um, setup for it. I don't know who the next Scott review is. Uh, the patrons will vote on that as we get to the end of Season 6. Um, Alright. Now is not Q&A time. We'll do... Maybe um after we finish all of the Ice and Fire ones, we can do a big Q&A and I'll actually pay attention to chat. <laughs> Let me tell you, man. Trying to focus on something and also looking at chat is like... I don't know how they do it. Alright. So, I'm just... Yeah. Dude. Nice. Good job, everyone. Thanks for, thanks for popping in. Thanks for, thanks for helping out. Thanks for uh, watching along. It's been a good time. Alright. Um, yeah. See ya. Oh, and by see ya, I mean like, will it be tomorrow? It could be tomorrow. <laughs> it could be, um, could be next week though. I don't know. Tough to say. <laughs>